Today's top stories at NBR, several government-linked investment funds move on excluding sovereign debt and securities of majority Russian state-owned enterprises from their funds. High Court agrees with a company linked to serial bankrupt Peter Shevin. Kiwi directors now globally connected to a hub for sharing knowledge and resources around climate governance. And there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, 100% subscriber funded and proudly brought to you by you, as is every story at nbr.co.nz. It's Thursday, March 3rd. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks again for joining us. Soured relationships and border closures have tipped the New Zealand company behind the five-star Six Senses Resort on Fiji's Malolo Island into receivership. Receivers from the Sydney office of FTI Consulting were first appointed to Island Grace Fiji Limited, IGF, by majority owner and financier Secateur Hotels on December 23rd. It's also in voluntary administration. Secateur Hotels is backed by Australian businessman Gordon Fell, known for his involvement in Rubicon Asset Management and the collapse of Alco Finance Group in 2008. The first receiver's report said the resort, which began construction in 2015 and opened in 2018 after a prolonged construction period, incurred losses in its ramp-up phase and had been closed since March 2020 and is maintained on a care and maintenance basis. Several government-linked investment funds, including NZ Superfund, have decided to exclude the sovereign debt and securities of majority Russian state-owned enterprises from their funds. The Accident Compensation Corporation, Government Superannuation Fund and National Provident Fund join the Superfund in implementing the exclusion in accordance with their respective responsible investment ethical policies, they said in a joint statement. The four investors said they would sell their directly held assets as market market conditions permit. The High Court has agreed with a company linked to serial bankrupt Peter Shevin in a $6.5 million property dispute with NBR listers Joanne and Glenn Inger. Shevin is a consultant to Birchwood Rodney Trustee Limited, which was due to buy a block of development land in Wellsford from Blue Moon Limited in 2020. In 2019, Birdwood agreed to buy the Wellsford property from Blue Moon for $6.5 million, but Birdwood did not meet a due diligence condition of the deal by an appointed date in 2020 and failed to pay rates on the property as agreed. As a result, Blue Moon considered that the deal had fallen over. It was surprised when Birdwood then declared the purchase unconditional in June 2021 and lodged a caveat against the property. But Associate Judge Danny Gardner said Blue Moon had failed to serve Birdwood with written notice that the deal was off and the matter should go to trial. She's ordered that the caveat remain in place. Chemicals that come into the country for use in business and agriculture largely disappear from the view of regulators and environmental agencies once they are through the border, representing a data gap that urgently needs fixing, according to New Zealand's Environment Commissioner Simon Upton. He's released today a report urging the government to draw up a pollutant release and transfer register, something every country in the OECD has, except New Zealand, to monitor quantities of chemicals imported, manufactured, sold and used, how much is used and where, and what effects the use is having. The report, knowing what's out there, regulating the environmental fate of chemicals, considers that fewer than 200 chemicals of roughly 30,000 approved for use in New Zealand are routinely monitored as part of of state-of-the-environment reporting or through resource consent monitoring. Some others are monitored, but less systematically. Kiwi company directors now have a globally connected network hub for sharing knowledge and resources around climate governance, which is widely recognised as a pressing priority even mid-pandemic. Following Thursday morning's live stream launch of Chapter Zero New Zealand, the local chapter of the World Economic Forum's Climate Governance Initiative, the Institute of Directors CEO Kirsten Patterson joined the NBR's Nicholas Shepard. Every kind of industry and sector is slightly different. For some, they will be driven by consumer concerns and consumer behaviour, also employee concerns. Uh, You know, it's a real key question that our workforces are asking us now, am I working for an organisation that is aligned with my personal values and is this organisation going to be sustainable in the long term? Institute of Directors CEO Kirsten Patterson with Nicholas Shepard there.
The full details of those stories and more are at nbr.co.nz right now. Tomorrow at NBR and Hunter's Corner, Tim Hunter takes a look at the newly listed Booster Innovation Fund, while M&A activity continued to skyrocket in the fourth quarter of last year, a report says. I'm Paul Brennan. Join me again from around lunchtime tomorrow for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then again right here from 5.30 tomorrow and through the weekend for another NBR This Week.